This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. The X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to another evening here in the X Zone. I am Rob McConnell, and for the next uh, three to four hours, I'm going to be your host and your guide as together we cross the time space continuum to this place that I call the X Zone. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And we're heard around the world on the Talkstar Radio Network, Radio X throughout Europe, and the X Zone Broadcast Network. If you'd like to send me an email, X Zone at X Zone Radio TV dot com on all social media sites. X Zone Radio TV and our main website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Ross Allison. He is a paranormal investigator, author, media host, lecturer, teacher, and even tour guide. The Pacific Northwest only full time ghost hunter. Ross is the founder of AGHOST, which is Advanced Ghost Hunters of Seattle, Tacoma and now runs A-Ghost Investigations. With close to 30 years of investigating the paranormal and over 17 years running a ghost hunting group, Ross travels internationally to investigate paranormal activity, collect ghost stories, and Ross uh, travels internationally. We said already that, okay, so researches cemeteries and teaches others about the strange things going on all around us. If you'd like to find out more about Ross, A-G-H-O-S-T dot O-R-G and spookedinseattle.com. And Ross, welcome to the Exxon. Well, thank you for having me. Tell me, what was it that uh, brought you into the world of the undead, the world of ghosts, and the world of hauntings? Well, I always tell everybody I blame my mother. <laughs> I blame my mother for a lot, too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I have a mother that uh, loves ghost stories. So I grew up listening to these mm-hmm. stories, and we're just fascinated with them. You know, just curious as to, are people really experiencing this stuff? So for me, you know, it was the curiosity that got me involved in this, where at the time when I got involved, most people involved in this field had actually had those encounters, Mm -hmm. and I was just envious of those people. When did you have your first encounter? Oh, I'd have to say it was uh, shortly after I started my group, and uh, we were investigating um, Alcatraz. We were actually spending the night mm-hmm. on the island. And uh, this is before, you know, all the ghost hunting shows and everything, so it was a little easier to get into some of these places. And so uh, we were doing our investigation, and what was really cool is they actually opened up locations that weren't open to the public. And one of those was the old morgue. Uh, this is where they would have kept the bodies uh, before they shipped them off to San Francisco. And I was the first one to venture through here, and there was this little um, tunnel that went down underground. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, curiosity, I'm going to check this out. And so I go down um, in this tunnel area, and it leads to this open room. And apparently this is where they would have kept gunpowder when this actually used to be a military base before it became the prison. And so I go down there, you know, and I've got my investigators right behind me, so they're, they're following me around. But I'm the first one to go in, and, 
you know, I, I take a picture of the room and say, okay, this is cool. So now I see where I'm going. So I, I head towards the back of the room mm -hmm. and now I want to get a picture of the entrance. And at that time, you know, the investigators are kind of filtering in. And so I go to back up to take a picture. And as I'm backing up, um, somebody put their hand on my shoulder and stopped me. So I looked over to apologize to the investigator that I backed into the corner and there was nobody there. I mean, I physically felt the weight of a man's hand, the pressure of his fingers physically stopping me as I was stepping backwards. Right. And I, you know, I was expecting to see a person mm -hmm. and there was nobody. So that was my first physical experience. And that's really, you know, what gets you going. I would imagine so. Um, since then, we've got about a minute before I have to take my break. How many investigations have you and your group gone on? Oh, gosh. Um, well, being that we're the oldest ghost hunting group in the Pacific Northwest, uh, we pretty much, I, uh, in trouble all over, I'd probably say about 700 investigations. My goodness. All over. Yeah. That's quite a bit. Listen, we like, keep busy. <laughs> you keep busy. That's great. And I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing some of the investigations that you've done over the years. Exonation Ross Allison is our special guest. A G H O S T dot O R G and spooked in Seattle dot com. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell, and Ross and I will be back after this break as we continue investigating the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology right here in the Exxon. Don't go away. Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? I'm Dr. Kimberly McGeorge, and on The Secret to Everything, we will merge the practical with open investigation into all realms of the mysterious. We will talk to cutting-edge alternative health practitioners, those who inspire and motivate you in business and life, 
And of course, we will share stories of the paranormal, conspiracy, and cryptozoology. You will transform because of the frequency I carry, the frequencies my guests carry. Life may never be the same after you listen to this program, for the secret to everything is for you, the listener, for those who desire more in every area of their lives and believe that it can still be found. Listen and discover thesecrettoeverything.com. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. Ross Allison is our special guest. He is the gentleman behind A G H O S T. Dot org and spookedinseattle.com. Uh, what has been your your most uh, enlightening investigation that you've done, where you've seen the most and you had the hair on the back of your head, you know, just kind of stick up and you get that tingling feeling all over you? Oh, well, like I said, we've, we've done tons and tons of investigations and all over the world we've done these investigations and I'd have to say, you know, even though I, you know, I, I've been to some of the scariest places that you could imagine. The most intriguing investigation for me um, is the one that everybody loves to hear about, and that's the investigation that I did at St. Louis University. Now, I lecture at colleges all over the U.S., mm-hmm. and so I was invited to St. Louis University to do my lecture. Now, when I do my lecture. After the lecture, I'll take the students on a ghost hunt to their campus. Now, St. Louis University, if people aren't aware of this, is where the true exorcist case took place. Mm-hmm. You know, the one that inspired the movies with Linda Blair. Yeah. So, you know, I was kind of excited, you know, to, to get to investigate this place. And the place that they took me to was the building right next to the church that was involved in this case. Now, At the time that the case happened, the church actually owned this building, but they've now sold it to the campus. Mm -hmm. So, you know, excited to check out this place. And when you go in, you know, it doesn't look any different than any other campus. You know, yes, it's an historic building. And so it was pretty cool to go through it. And they take me upstairs to the fourth floor. Now, I was kind of surprised by this because the fourth floor was completely abandoned. I mean, run down, graffiti everywhere, holes in the walls. And I was kind of surprised because it's huge up there. And I'm thinking, gosh, you know, why doesn't the campus utilize this space? And they they bring it to my attention. They said, well, you know, the reason why they stopped using the space is because they've had so many problems on the fourth floor. And problems they're referring to as paranormal problems. And I'm thinking, okay, this is interesting. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're going around through the fourth floor, and, you know, I've got, you know, doing the readings, taking photos, and they're telling me some of the stories. And they said, you know, when the church owned this building, the fourth floor was used for, you know, classrooms, for Sunday school. And they also had some of the nuns living up there. And, you know, they took me into one of the rooms where apparently a nun had committed suicide. And, you know, I'm thinking, oh, this is kind of cool. You know, not that she committed suicide, <laughs> but it was just a good lead for us. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're going around through all the different rooms, and I walk into this one room. Mm -hmm. And right when I walked into the room, I heard this crunch underneath my feet. Now I looked down, and I realized, oh, stepped on a dead bird, you know. So I kind of kicked it over the side so no one else would step on it. And, you know, seeing dead animals in abandoned places would not be unusual for me. Yeah. 
But when I shined my light through the rest of the room, I was surprised to see that the room was just filled with dozens and dozens of dead birds. They were all over the place. Huh. Now, I had already been through most of the fourth floor, mm -hmm. and I had not come across any of these dead birds until I got to this one room. Now, what made this really interesting is the fact that security had gone through the fourth floor and removed all the doors. And the reason for this is because they constantly had students sneaking up there to mm -hmm. scare each other. So it just made it easier for them to do their rounds when they didn't have to open and close doors. So I just started thinking, I'm like, wow, you know, why did the birds all die in this one room yeah. when they had access to the whole fourth floor? Well, as the, the students come to filter in, they bring it to my attention that this is the room that the boy had stayed in. Now, the stories have it that... Um, they had moved the boy to various different locations and performed multiple exorcisms on the boy because they felt that they performed a full exorcism on the boy could kill him. So I realize I'm standing in a room that this boy had stayed in for a short time and an exorcism had been performed in this room. So creep factor is going up a bit here. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that I do is I give the students some of the basic equipment that they can use on the investigation and they start to gather in this room with me and we're in this room for less than five minutes when all of a sudden all the equipment starts to go off at the exact same time right away we start to feel like the temperature starts to drop in the room and it's getting colder and colder almost to the point where i'm expecting to see my breath anytime soon the EMF detector is going off like crazy. We can't find any source that's producing this high EMF readings. And the compass, it's spinning around and around and around and around, and it will not stop. So I'm like, oh, my God. I got to document this. I got to prove that we are really experiencing this. And unfortunately, a photo won't do that. So I immediately switched my camera over to video. And luckily, my camera shoots in infrared as well. So mm -hmm. I start filming everything that's going on. I'm filming the equipment. I'm filming you know, the students. And I'm thinking, okay, this is you know, really cool. You know, we're proving that this is happening. But then it starts to slow down a little bit. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, before this completely stops, I want to try for some EVP. And if anybody's not familiar with that, that's electronic voice phenomena. So I start asking questions into the air and I finally get to the question I ask can you tell me whose room this is now there's about you know 15 seconds of silence and then all of a sudden I start to hear crying to the left of me and I turn and I realize that a couple of the female students have started to cry because they're so terrified being in this room mm -hmm. and I realize okay you know, they're uncomfortable. I have to admit, I'm a little uncomfortable because I don't have my normal ghost hunting team. These are just college students. So for me, it's always been about safety. So I decided, you know what? I don't know what we're up against here. Let's get you guys out of here. Let's go ahead and you know continue on with our tour somewhere else. Sure. Hopefully, after the tour, I can come back and do my own little investigation. Well, I didn't get a chance to go back that night. But when I finally got home after my lecture tour, I started reviewing everything that I collected at all these campuses. And I got to that campus and that night, and I started listening to the recording. And when I got to the point where it asked, can you tell me whose room this is? I got two responses. Now I'll edit this because I don't want to offend anybody, but it basically says in this male demonic like voice it says f you oh my God. it's mine yeah <laughs> that was probably one of my most interesting investigations why do you think that anything evil demonic or spiritual or ghost-like would remain there after all these years you know i, I i'm not sure um you know as to you know, if it was exercised from the, the boy, mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure why it would remain there. Um, I, I've never personally been involved in exorcisms myself. Um, but I definitely feel that maybe the attention that it's probably getting 
because of the stories that have circulated around the campus and continue to circulate. You know, like I said, there's constantly problems with students sneaking up there. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure it's not being left alone. Yeah. So whatever it is, it might like the attention it's getting, you know. But even in the case of the Alcatraz uh, experience you had, why would these spirits, why would these embodied or disembodied creatures hang around? Why don't they leave, go somewhere else? Well, maybe it's they don't know uh, what's occurred. Maybe there's, you know, there as they say, there's attachment to a person, place, or thing. Mm-hmm. So there could be the attachment to the property. But then, too, you know, I think it's a situation where they may want to possess that area. That that's their attachment to the environment. Um, they don't want to move on because, you know, if you start to consider what kind of person you might have been, yeah. maybe you weren't a good enough person to go on to what your heaven is like. And so rather deal with judgment, uh, being judged, I think uh, you might hang around and see what, you know, the afterlife has to offer you. So it, it sounds like we do not yet have a lot of answers when it comes to what ghosts are, what hauntings are, you know, what causes possessions, what causes uh, people to be so demonically possessed that an exorcist has to come in. What do we know? Well, like I said, uh, you know, we do understand that there is some sort of attachment to this. Um, as I said, with the, the items or a person or the location, mm-hmm. Um, we do know that there is something intelligent going on rather than just residual hauntings where there's just trapped memories playing themselves out over and over again. So we do understand that there is something out there or there are beings out there that are trying to communicate to us. Um, and this has been proven through EVP, the electronic voice phenomena, where these voices will answer our questions through recording devices. You know, and that's pretty amazing right there. Well, yeah, I, I, so, under, I understand that. But isn't it possible that it could be the subconscious desire of those conducting the investigation that they could somehow be telepathically imprinting the digital or the analog recorder? You know, I have heard those theories mm-hmm. uh, as well. And I think in, in some cases uh, it, it's possible. Again, we don't have the answers. There's yeah. always going to be more questions than the answers in this field. You know, it's the same thing, you know, as when people want to talk about Ouija boards. You know, I, a lot of people want to think that, you know, they're the gateway to, to hell. You know, you're, you're causing trouble if you use these. But, mm-hmm. you know, going with what you just said, I think in that situation where if you're using a Ouija board, you're opening that channel, that possibly that psychic channel, mm-hmm. where maybe it isn't a ghost communicating to you. Maybe it is your own psychic abilities, because if you are using it correctly, you're actually going into that trance that psychics are known to go into when they're trying to pick up information. So who's to say that when you're using a Ouija board or a pendulum or dowsing rods, that you're not doing the exact same thing? You're opening up some sort of psychic channel within yourself and that's how you're able to get this information that you wouldn't have known. And this is information that very well could be correct. What kind of information has ever been discovered through the paranormal that can be proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that the claims are legitimate? Well, you know, I think a lot of it, it we're still struggling with that, to mm-hmm. be honest with you. We're still struggling to get the answers because the problem that we have in the world of, you know, paranormal research, or especially when it comes to ghosts, is it has become a very popular field now, especially with all the television shows. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people out there that are ghost hunting. But unfortunately, there's a lot of groups out there that don't have the education or the understanding of what's truly involved because they're just imitating what they see on TV. So it becomes monkey see, monkey do. And so the problem we have in this field is there's not any standards when it comes to ghost hunting. All right, stand by, there's Ross. So you and I have to take our break here no at the bottom of the hour for the news. Exo Nation, interesting conversation with our guest this hour, Ross Allison. www.aghost.org and spookedinseattle.com. 
This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. You're listening to us around the world on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, and across Europe on Radio X. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.xzbn.net. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Nemology Science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Nemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today. Know the name, know the person. Or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere, Florida. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine such as hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining rooms can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you visit, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic downtown Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, Old Florida cuisine at its best. Welcome back, everyone. We're talking about ghost hauntings, things that go bump in the night this hour here in the X-Zone. Ross Allison is our special guest. He is a paranormal investigator, author, media host, lecturer, teacher, and even tour guide. 
www.spookedinseattle.com and aghost.org. Before we went to the break, we uh, started talking about the the popularity of ghost hunting. Uh, and a lot of it could be attributed to the number of uh, television shows that are on these days. I, I've got to be honest with you. I've seen these shows. I think they're nothing else but a bunch of bunk. I don't think they... <laughs> I, I, you know, it's, it's just a matter of, geez, the programmers now have so much dead air. What are they going to put in there? So they're going to take these homemade productions, throw them on air, and everybody's thinking they're going to get rich, and they don't. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, so you yourself as a credible researcher doing this for so many years, how do you see the influence of these shows affecting those who want to become ghost hunters? Well, as I was saying, it. There's so many groups out there mm-hmm. that lack the um, you know education and experience, and they get the attention that mm-hmm. they're craving for. And so with a, without having any standards in the field of paranormal investigation, whenever we submit evidence, whether you know you believe it's legit or it's questionable, um, we're always, going to be you know questioning anybody's evidence out there because of the fact that we don't have any strict rules that we go by when we ghost hunt Mm -hmm. and without the community coming together and having these standards that's where it's going to hurt us the most but why doesn't the community come to why doesn't the community come together is is it a matter that everybody wants to have the smoking gun and they want to they want to be the group to find that all conclusive proof and they're not willing to share or work with other groups. What is it? Exactly. And that's a lot of it. Really? There's too many egos involved. There's too many people that think, Oh, I've got the, the, the golden key mm-hmm. that's going to prove that there's ghosts out there, but yet we don't want to share that information. We want to make sure that I'm going to be the one that's going to be in the history books that proves that there's a life after death. And so with, with those egos out there, yeah. um, it's become a huge problem. And the problem also is, you know, these groups become territorial. You know, they get mad if you come into their area and do an investigation. And how can, how and can they the get mad? That, how, know, can they, how, can they, how can they claim an area, for goodness sake? That, that's just ridiculous. I, it is. It is, unfortunately. Because one of the things that I feel that's so important in this field mm-hmm. is we have to be willing to share. Sure. Because as we learned in the field of paranormal research, it's all about being at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. You're not always going to get the experience you want. But if we're willing to share and share locations, when one group goes in and they walk away with an interesting EVP or an interesting experience, Mm -hmm. and another group can go in later and walk away with that same experience, all it does is validate both groups. And it validates the location as well. So how do you overcome that? Well, I don't know if we can, you know, I I think the best thing we can is just to continue to have open channels of communication. Mm -hmm. If there are groups out there that are willing to talk, that are willing to share, that will help. And then, you know, also share our ideas and theories as to what's going on out there. Because, you know, there's no device out there that's going to tell you, yes, you have a ghost in your home. Mm -hmm. What we do as paranormal investigators, is we just take whatever devices we can to help read the environment and help us determine if there's changes in the environment that we can't explain. And that's the best we can do as paranormal investigators. So where can someone go who wants to learn the proper procedures uh, of, you know, investigating the paranormal to become a, a serious ghost researcher? Well, I think that's the key word right there, research. You have to be willing to do the work yourself and look into, you know, some of these groups and do your research and find out, does this group seem credible to you? Mm -hmm. What protocols do they follow if they have protocols? You know, what equipment are they using if they even have equipment? You know, those are some of the things that you have to do if you're looking to get involved in this. Do the research yourself. Prove that you're willing to do the work that's needed to validate your own experiences if you're going to go in and do investigations with these groups. Because unfortunately, there's a lot of groups out there 
that will destroy your credibility because they're not willing to protect their own. That must be very frustrating for someone like yourself. It is. It is. But, you know, I basically have to create my own road, my own path in this field. And if there's others w wishing to follow me, mm -hmm. that's great. You know, and as I you know come across other paths in the field, I may find that there's other people out there that are very credible and, and works as hard as I do in maintaining the credibility in this field. And that's where we try to come together and share those ideas. So why is why is Seattle so haunted? <laughs> you know, it's kind of surprising, too, because Seattle is so young. Mm -hmm. You know, we're the youngest city out there when it comes to the United States. Um, we were the last area to be developed. So for me, you know, as I was doing research and developing my tours for Spook in Seattle, um, I, I was surprised to find that, you know, even in our historic district, which is known as Pioneer Square, that we were able to obtain amazing stories and experiences that validate, you know, Pioneer Square being just as haunted as any other pioneer city in the U.S., and I think that has a lot to do with, you know, Seattle has its fair share of tragedies as well. You know, we dealt with the Depression. We had mm -hmm. to deal with the gold rush. We had to deal with, you know, um, the bootlegging and also prostitution, you know, opium dens. So, you know, Seattle has its fair share of tragedy and that, you know, negative history. And I think a lot of that uh, holds on to the the spirits that were involved at those times why do a number of ghost research groups or ghost tours go through cemeteries are there ghosts in well, cemeteries or is this just something to spook and excite the people well really it is exciting to be in an area where you know you're surrounded by the dead literally but you know i i have to admit i have had some interesting experiences in cemeteries and I think a lot of this, again, going back to the attachment to a person, place, or thing, there mm -hmm. is attachment to your body, where I, I believe some of these spirits don't know how to let go of that. But you also have to consider the fact that cemeteries were, much, or were treated a lot differently than they are today. People actually constantly visited their dead. There was a lot more respect for the dead back in the day. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are known times where you could actually go and have a picnic in some of these cemeteries because they were so beautiful and peaceful. Yeah. And so you could actually sit down, you know, on the site of your, your dead grandmother and, you know, and have a sandwich and, and reach out and try to communicate, you know, with her past soul. So I think a lot of that uh, holds on to or, or it brought out a lot of these spirits that um, they don't know where to go to now. You know, their families have long passed, mm -hmm. so they're still wandering around, wondering where they are. Why don't they visit anymore? Would you say that the dead aren't getting the respect they deserve these days? Oh, yeah, definitely. A and what part... Especially when you have... Mm -hmm. Go on. Well, I was going to say, a lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, there's, you know, one popular show, I won't say by name, but that taught people to be disrespectful. Um, you know, to go in and taunt the spirits and say, you know, if you're here, prove it, you know. And I think those situations have also, you know, prompt a, a group of people out there mm -hmm. that mirror that as well. And they'll go around and be disrespectful and taunt the spirits. And I, I think that's the worst thing that you could do. What are the, what are the top three things? that you would suggest anyone listening to the show tonight not to do if they want to become paranormal investigators? Well, I would say, number one, don't be disrespectful. You know, mm -hmm. if, if, if ghosts are truly out there and they are the people that were once among the living, I think the best thing you can go, you can do is to just to go in there and be respectful to them as you would go into someone's home as a guest and, you know, treat them with that same respect. Because I think in that case, you're probably going to get a lot more out of it rather than going in and being disrespectful. So I always say, you know, be respectful and hopefully you'll get the results that you want. Um, the other thing is also, you know, be respectful towards other groups. 
Um, I think, you know, if there are groups in your neighborhood, um, you know, try to reach out and communicate to them. Um, put the egos aside. You know, it's there's far too many groups out there than they'll ever have ghost hunting shows. And if you're in it for the, the fact that you're hoping to have a ghost hunting show, you're in it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Um, I think you definitely, if you want to get involved in this field, you got to understand the kind of person that you are. And you have to ask yourself those questions like, why am I really involved in this field? Am I a thrill seeker? Do I just want to go in and, and have the experiences that I see on TV? Or do I really want to have a true understanding as to what's going on? And I find that those those are the three reasons why people get involved in this field. It's, you know, because you want to have your own ghost hunting show, you're a thrill seeker, or you truly want to understand what's going on out there. And those are some of the things that you have to ask yourself. So, so two I think a, if, you, if you... Go ahead. I was just going to say, so two out of three reasons are reasons not to get involved. And you want to... And, and why to get involved? No, no, I said two of those three reasons... Mm-hmm. Yeah, or not. Or yeah, not to get involved. Yeah. And then let's see. Let me think of a third one. Gosh, um, I, I would have to say, um, don't get involved if you're afraid of this of this stuff. You know, I, I find that a lot of people that get involved in this field is, you know, they're they're curious about it. They want to know what they're what's out there, mm-hmm. but they're they're too afraid. They're the ones that you know. Well, ooh, I, I don't want to be the first one to go into the room. Well, <laughs> you have to overcome those fears, you know, and it happens. You even see it on the ghost hunting shows where you know, they'll sit there. They like to send people out there in this field that are afraid of it. And so they'll make them um, basically confront their fears, but they can't. because They'll hear a strange noise and they'll scream and run away. If you're that kind of person, don't get involved in this field. I'm sorry. Sure. You have to be able to sit in the dark and wait patiently for something to happen. But and if a little ping or pop is going to scare you, uh, you probably don't need to be here. But ghosts aren't just around during the night. Why don't these people investigate the ghosts during the day? Because of the myth that people believe that it only happens at night. People don't understand that activity happens 24-7. It's not always at night. I think people, you know, and I get to ask this a lot of times, why do we ghost hunt at night? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a couple reasons why we ghost hunt at night. For one, you have to have a controlled environment. All right, let's hold that there because this is getting interesting, and I don't want to interrupt you like I I just did because we have to go to a break. No problem. Ross, stand by, my friend. Thanks very much for coming on the show. It's uh, it's great having you with us. Exo Nation, Ross Allison is our guest, aghost.org and spookedinseattle.com. Ross and I will return as we wrap up this hour here in the Exo from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Hi everyone, Rob McConnell here, and I wanted to spend a moment on internet streaming. Everybody has heard about internet streaming, but not many know much about it. Did you know the internet streams just about everything? Movies. From new releases to old classics. TV shows. Almost every show, every episode, and much more. But the question has always been, how do you do it? Well now, thanks to the folks at 123 Ready TV, I have the answer for you. They have developed a simple program app, 123 Ready TV, that you install on your Windows PC, Android smartphone, or Android tablet that can have you streaming like a pro in less than five minutes. You truly won't believe how much is available or how easy it is to do until you try. And for a one-time cost of only $19.99, this product is a real winner. To learn more about 123 Ready TV, visit our website at www.xzbn.net. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, 
Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. There's a legend shared by many indigenous cultures of a time when the nations were cast to the four corners of the world. Each nation was given a body of sacred knowledge that held a different portion of the truth to preserve. True reality could not be known until all the nations reunited, combining the information. If a single one was missing, the world could not be reborn and darkness would prevail. The Science of Magic Radio is dedicated to reuniting the sacred knowledge. With the understanding, none of us has all the answers, but together we can open new perceptions and possibilities. Through our combined vision, the world can be reborn into a place where darkness no longer prevails. Join me, Gwilda Wiecka, and the Science of Magic daily on the Exxon Broadcast Network, xzbn.net, or visit us at thescienceofmagic.net. All right, Exo Nation, Ross Allison is our guest, aghost.org and spookedinseattle.com. Yeah, you you and I were talking about why most people don't do ghost hunting uh, during the day, and, and you said, well, for one thing, at night you have a better control of the environment. How is that? Right. Well, it's hard to do an investigation when you're being called into a business and their operating hours are during the day. You know, you're yeah. not going to be able to do an investigation of people are walking in and out of the building. Mm -hmm. Um, But also, too, um, when you're doing a private home, you have to wait till the family's home to allow you to let you in to do an investigation. So that's usually almost people work, you know, nine to five. So usually get into some of these places at night to do an investigation. But the other reason, too, that um, we tend to do an investigation in the dark and at night is because we, we like to use infrared. And infrared and full spectrum and stuff like that has been known to pick up things in the dark where it's harder to pick up the, that phenomena during the day with the lights on. Now, those are the two main reasons mm-hmm. why we tend to get inv- invited to do an investigation at night. But uh, one of the things that I have worked on is uh, one of my books called My Haunted Journal, which teaches people to journal their experiences because it is so important journaling, which a lot of people aren't doing. Um, because the one thing that's important about this is it keeps their experiences true and raw. 
Because we don't realize that when we have an experience, we tend to elaborate or twist the story around a little bit as we retell our experience. You know, our, our intent is not to lie, yeah. but our intent is the fact that we had an experience. We want people to believe we had that experience. So we naturally embellish so, it. Exactly. So what's important is to get people to journal their experiences, to write them down. Mm -hmm. And by writing down these experiences, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're telling us what exactly happened, but you're also allowing anybody that's going to review these experiences, these stories, or even for yourself to review your experiences, is you may be able to determine if there's a pattern to the activity. Now, you may find that activity happens or some of these reports happen during the day, maybe at noon. Mm -hmm. Now, most people don't realize activity happens 24-7 because they're busy with their day. You know, the kids are running around making the noise, stereos on, TVs on, so you don't hear the footsteps going up and down the hall that are happening throughout the day. You only hear them at night. So that's another reason why people report activity mostly at night. But if you are aware that activity can happen 24-7, you, when you start to journal your experiences, you're helping us to determine if there is a pattern. And if there is a pattern, it's going to better us as paranormal investigators as to when we should be there to do an investigation. And it may be having to do an investigation during the day. When is the best time for someone who believes their home to be under some sort of haunting or that it's in, you know, it has an unwanted spirit? When is the best time for them to call you, when they first suspect it or when they actually have an experience? I would say when you first expect it, because the first thing that my team is going to do is going to say, okay, you think you might have something going on. Well, please journal for mm -hmm. us. Journal for about a month. You know, of course, if the activity seems to increase and you're frightened, we'll definitely be out there to help you right away. But otherwise, we really need that information as to what you believe is happening. Because, you know, another thing that's really important to know is because of the popularity of ghost hunting and all these ghost hunting shows, people are more to believe their house is haunted when it's not. Because of the excitement, the psychology that's involved in this field, they, they really want to start thinking that their house is haunted. For them. And so... We'll get a lot of these calls where somebody thinks that something's going on mm -hmm. and you have to go through that process of debunking and try to determine whether this is phenomena that could easily be explained or whether it's wishful thinking or whether you're just taking the wrong medication, you know? I would There's imagine. all kinds of different reasons. What is the first clue to you and your group when you go to a house that this person is looking for? attention that there is no no paranormal activity here and how do you break it to them it's a hard thing it really is because you know in this field you tend to find yourself in the counseling session mm. you know where you have to be the counselor yeah and we're not trained counselors you know so the the hardest part is being honest with people because they so believe that there's something going on in their home and you can go in, and this is another problem we have in the field, is you can go in and debunk everything and put it all in black and white and say, this is what's really going on. I'm sorry, I don't think you have a ghost. Well, here's where the problem lies. They'll sit there, they truly believe that there's something going on in their home, or maybe they want something to happen in their home. They'll say, you're not the right ghost hunting group for me. And they will go out and they will find a group that will support them that will tell them that, yes, you have a ghost in your home. They may even tell you you have a demon in your home. And it just escalates from there. So it is a challenge, you know, to be honest with your client, especially when you have to tell them that this is not a ghost, mm -hmm. this is not an orb in your photo, this is dust. Um, this is just some of the challenges you have to face. But I think you do yourself a better service if you can be honest with everybody. Are those orbs still around? Geez, I haven't heard anybody talk about orbs in years. <laughs> Gosh. Yes, they're still around. Oh, my God. 
They, people will still submit us photos of, of dust particles and say, oh, that's an orb. Oh, my goodness. And you just kind of have to say, oh, well, you think it's an <laughs> orb, but, you know, these are some of the things it could also be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you deal with skepticism? I understand skepticism is necessary in everything, and, and, and most of the time it's good, but how do you deal with arrogance mixed with skepticism? Oh. Sometimes you just have to sit down and realize that you you both have to agree to disagree. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I, I I'm all for skepticism. In fact, I encourage it. I would love. In fact, it was interesting because not too long ago I was invited to speak for um, a skepticism group, and and when he called me and said, you know, would you be willing to talk about ghosts? I said sure, and he was kind of shocked by this because he contacted all kinds of other groups. And they all said no. They didn't want to be confronted with skepticism. And I said, I'm more, I'm more for it. Yeah. I would love to sit down and have a healthy debate with somebody who is skeptic and, and share our evidence. Because one of the things that's most important about having skepticism in, in your group is it's going to help you to think of other elements that may have caused the phenomena that you didn't think of and help to debunk things because that's what we have to do. You know, to maintain our credibility, we have to be able to go in and debunk this stuff first. Mm -hmm. And there is going to be some of that bit of um, evidence that people are going to be like, wow, we don't know what that is. But no one can figure it out. And so skepticism is a huge thing that people should not neglect in this field. When you're out doing your lectures at colleges and universities, what are some of the questions that the students uh, ask you? Well, uh... Besides the what's my most scariest experience, yeah. which I've already told, yep. um, a lot of students want to know if they want to get in this field, uh, what classes they should take. Mm-hmm. And I always tell them history is important and psychology is also very important. Those are the two classes that I would definitely encourage anybody who wants to get into this field that they should be more educated in. Because they play a major part in this field. Yeah, it's, you know, like uh, ghost tours and true ghost researchers are great historians. They keep the history exactly. alive, yeah. And, and it's funny, too, because I do, you know, with my ghost tours at Spooked in Seattle, mm-hmm. we include history in our storytelling because I find it's a very big, important part of, that ties in these ghosts that we talk about. Mm-hmm. And I've been on a lot of tours where they don't even talk about history. They just tell you the ghost story and then they move on. And I find that it's a huge part of this. You have to understand, you know, the era that they come from and what life was like, you know, at those times. The connection and you between be able the pa- to identify. Sure, and the, and the connection between the past and the present and where it may extrapolate into the future. Exactly. Yeah. We've got about two minutes left. What are your final thoughts Final words for the listening audience of the Exxon Nation tonight. Well, I think if anything, you know, if you're going to get involved in this field, have an open mind. You know, there's going to be a lot of things out there that we can't explain, and we may never be able to in our lifetime. But as long as I continue to be honest with my experiences and continue to educate people, I think I do the world of paranormal research a great service, you know. And also, you know, like me on Facebook and and uh, follow my adventures as well. All right, Ross, I want to thank you ever so much for joining us. Uh, before you do go, let our listeners know how they can find you on the web as well as on Facebook. Yeah, definitely. You can uh, uh, look up Ross Allison, uh, Ghost Hunter, and you can find me on, on Facebook and like me. Uh, you can also uh, check out my books. I have uh, five books out from Ghostology 101, uh, Spooked in Seattle, uh, Tacoma's Haunted History, My Haunted Journal, and my latest Haunted Toys that I did with David Weatherly. Um, and then, of course, uh, Spooked in Seattle at uh, spookedinseattle.com. You may be lucky enough if you're in the Seattle area. I do ghost tours as well. Ross, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your knowledge and your experience. I look forward to the next time you and I meet back here in the X-Zone. Until then, be safe and well. Thank you. Good night, Ross. All right, X-Zone Nation. Ross Allison has been my guest this hour. Once again, um, 
Very interesting hour. If you'd like to find out more about Ross, as he said, his uh, websites are aghost.org and spookedinseattle.com and visit him on Facebook as well. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Thank you. 